What's up, y'all? It's uh, Take a Breather, episode 007. And today we're going to talk about drama. We also have a guest speaker, and we're going to go through the song of the day. There might be a joke. I don't know. kittens out there. Hope you guys are doing great. No, really though. I hope you guys are doing great. Hope you got hope your week is going awesome. Uh, we got a good show lined up for you today. We got our first guest speaker ever, which is a pretty cool thing if you ask me. Uh, not on, not only that, we just had the joke of the day about Abu Dhabi. Get Abu Dhabi do like yabba dabba do. Get it? The Flintstones. The Flintstones. Hey, let's not forget the song of the week. Uh, this week's song of the week is uh, one of my faves at this current point in time. Uh, it is Social Club is Not Dead by the Social Club Misfits. If you've never heard of them, I think they're pretty good. They got some pretty good stuff. So go check it out. The link is in the description down below. Um, just check it out there. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. So we have our first guest ever. Uh, this is something I'm planning on doing every week. I'm going to shoot to have a new guest every week. It's not going to be anybody crazy necessarily, but just somebody we know or somebody I know, so one of my friends, one of my buddies, somebody I made a connection with through ministry that I can uh, bring on the show and uh, get a different perspective, different angle on things. Uh, the first guest is, you know him very well, we call him J-Square, Racing Jason, uh, the man himself, Jason Jones. Jason Jones, how you doing? How you doing today, man? Hey, I'm doing great, Luke. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. Anything new with you? You know, I'm just uh, living the life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, going to work every day. Oh uh, yeah. Coming home. Good stuff, man. That's okay. about it. You know, you can't it. go. How's your can't really go anywhere. How's your little baby? He's he's good. He's he's got an ear infection right now, but um, taking medicine and. Uh, I, th I think he'll be getting better in the next day or two. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, so this is uh, this is episode 007. Are Ooh. you a fan of James Bond at all? You know, or I, do you care? I, I'm not a huge fan. I, I'm not against him or anything like that. I don't dislike him, <laughs> but uh, I, I think I could be him. Probably. Maybe. I um, thought you were him for for a solid four years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I am. I'm, a, I'm an agent. So, you, how would you know? I, I liked. <coughs> I never really got into James Bond, but there was one movie of, of you know, James Bond movie. It was uh, Die Another Day, and it had Halle Berry in it. And for some reason, that was a really good movie. And I, from what I remember, is like this guy. He's like trying to get some diamonds or something, and he ends up. Um, I don't know. That's that's really all I remember from it. That I, I want to say, I want to say I've seen that one. But yeah. I, it's with uh, Pierce Brosnan. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's him. <coughs> so, uh, for those of you who are watching, I've known Jason my whole life, literally, um, and we really started getting close once we started doing Cross Eye together, which was a drama group. Um, we used to do shows all over the place, like in Kentucky, a few in Indiana, I think one or two in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember, I don't know if you remember this. I remember one time we were coming back from. Um, we were coming back from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, at David Skidmore's church, and uh, I, I think I know where you're going with we, this. We we were driving along and we hit a rabbit. Do you remember this? It was at night. It was yeah. dark. So we hit this rabbit, and nobody was looking except for me. And I was like, "Dude, we just hit a rabbit." And you were like, "No, we didn't." And I was like, "Yeah, did you feel that bump?" And he's like, "Yeah." And so we called I, up Jeannie and Hannah and. <laughs> And we told them that we hit this rabbit, and they were so upset that they cried. <laughs> do you remember that? I, I, yes, I, I do. And I, I I don't remember ever seeing the rabbit. I never saw the rabbit. Oh, I saw the rabbit. I did feel the, I did feel the bump. <laughs> that's the same trip. I don't know if you want me saying this, but that's the same trip. You you almost fell asleep while driving on the way back. That, that, no, that, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you're, you're probably true. Yes, it was late at night. And it was. I, you know, I don't do well if I'm. It was good. Tired. We didn't die. That's the main thing. If we died, I'd have been upset. But we, we, no, we. I kept you alive. Yeah, that's the main thing. That's yeah. It's right. all good. <coughs> so, so speaking of of hitting an animal, have you ever hit an animal, Luke? 
I'm sure I have. <laughs> I remember one time I was driving down Beulah Church Road and I didn't hit it. It was the truck that was coming the other way from me and a hawk came in front of our cars and it like just like got hit by this truck in the windshield and just like blah and just like flew up in the air. Like I didn't fly up in there. It couldn't fly anymore, but it like <laughs> it flipped like, up in the air and like <laughs> it's pretty bad. But I've never I've never killed an animal while driving that I remember. I've I've never intentionally killed an animal. Intentionally. <laughs> That's, Not the, that's the key word there. The topic of the week is uh, drama, or save the drama for your mama, which your mama's a very sweet lady. I wouldn't hold any drama for her. But um, I guess we'll talk about that. Why is dealing with drama in a in a healthy, Christ-like way important? Why does that matter? Oh, that, I mean, that's, that's crucial. I mean, that's... <sighs> Just dealing with with anything, trying to deal with anything on our own can be difficult, right? So, um, if if we if we have things that are going on or dealing with with drama, um, so to speak, uh, I mean, God needs to be involved. Oh yeah, um, we need to to um, definitely take things to Him. Um, we need to. Uh, be, be patient and, and be patient with others. Um, so when, when we're, when our connection with God is good, our connection with others is, is good. And, and even when somebody is um, maybe causing drama with you, um, it, it can be hard. And sometimes you have to distance yourself um, from that person. So it, it, I think it's very important to, uh, and to not always, um, react immediately i think it's important to yeah uh, kind of <clears throat> take a deep breath you know and and think through things before you just react yeah i think the most the most difficult part for me about dealing with drama is my ego and i'm like i try to let my ego get in the way and you know mm -hmm. i get into a dramatic situation whether i start it or not and my ego gets in the way and it's like well i can't back down from this fight and right. it's it just escalates thing and if I don't sit here and go I right, I'm not really that special of a person um, I'm just like everybody else um, it usually tends to go a lot better than it than it would if I tried to let my ego get in the way sure um, <coughs> let's see number next question uh, what are some tips you have with it what are some tips you have in dealing with drama um, I, I think kind of going back to what I just said, um, I, I think a tip would be to take a deep breath, um, kind of just, just see what, uh, I, I think what's important to, is to have somebody to go to, um, to have somebody that you trust, that you love, that will be real with you, you know, and, and they can help you give advice. Um, we can always take things to God. That's important. You need to pray about it. Um, but, but also to have somebody that's a good friend, uh, that you can, um, take your drama to and not to bring them into it. Uh, but just to get, get their advice and get help. Yeah. And that way you're not taking the drama to your mama. Right. Take, take the drama to Jesus. Take it to Jesus, not your mama. <laughs> not your mama. Your mama didn't deserve that. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess Jesus didn't either. But right, your mama don't want to hear that. She'll smack you in the face. <laughs> um, <coughs> is it ever okay to have a dramatic response to a situation or to respond to something or someone in a dramatic way? When is that okay or when is it beneficial? Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Or do you have any, I mean, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I, if I'm remembering correctly, <coughs> I remember uh, Jesus going into the temple and seeing people gambling and doing things, selling things, and and he starts flipping over tables. Yeah. That's, that's a little dramatic, right? A little dramatic. I, I, I mean, I can't imagine him going in there with a smile on his face, like, hey, everybody, woo, woo, you know, flipping tables. Like, you get a table flip, and you, you, you get a table get flip. A table flip. <laughs> I, I just, I, I feel like that was pretty dramatic, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, 
I, I think we just have to be careful. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I think that like you, I think you had said to me earlier is um, we, we all go through drama at some point. Uh, we all have some type of drama in our lives of, of, of um, with whether it's with another person or, or with a situation. Um, yeah. I think yeah. really, not to cut you off, I think what it really boils down to as far as a, a proper time to respond in a dramatic way, I think it really boils down to what is the reason for it. <coughs> what mm -hmm. is the reason for it? Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm, you know, getting mad and responding in a really dramatic way because, um, I don't know, you stole my pencil, then that's, that's kind of silly. But sure. if I am responding in a dramatic way because people have been mistreated or people have been um, the the bad end or the receiving end of abuse or whatever that is, it would right. be okay to, to to respond in a dramatic way, at least to an extent. Sure. Because sure. sometimes it needs that. Like, like you said, Jesus, said that when he flipped the tables, he did that because those people were taking advantage of... <coughs> taking advantage of people who were trying to, to praise God and get close to God, and they were just totally ruining all of it. Yeah, um, right. No, I, so think you're spot I, I do on. think there is a time and a place for Oh, it. yeah, for sure. Um, are there any passages of Scripture that jump out to you um, in regard to drama or anything that kind of jumps out at you in the Bible that has to do with drama or anything like that? Yeah. I, um, I'll tell you a couple of things that I thought of. Um, I'll tell you a couple of verses, and then I'll tell you... Um, a story that is pretty full of drama. Um, so the, the, the passage um, is actually in Galatians chapter, um, if I can find it, Galatians chapter 5. Uh, it's 14 through 16. It says, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Um, so, the importance, you know, of first, you know, um, we're told that we're we know the greatest command is to love God with all your heart and all your soul, all your mind and all your strength, and then the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. If that is happening. You know, if you're connected with God and you're connected with others and you right. love others, um, that still doesn't mean that there's not going to be drama in your life. It doesn't mean that people are not going to attack you, and you know, and not necessarily physically, but right. uh, um, attack you or um, come at you with with something or be upset with you. Um, but your response is is report, important. That you know, as, as if you bite and devour each other, um, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So if if you go back and forth, all this back and forth, that's going to end up bad. Um, um, that there's got to be forgiving. Um, forgiveness has to be involved, and it it takes time. Sometimes it's not immediately. Uh, so the the story that I thought of it's it's um, in the Old Testament, and you you may be pretty familiar with it, but it's um, if you remember when King Solomon um, initially what uh, God basically said he he would give him anything, and he chose wisdom, he chose this um, a discerning heart. Um, and, and right after that happens, there's a story of a wise ruling. Do you remember this story, Luke? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so these two women come to um, come to Solomon, um, and, and one of them says, Pardon me, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born... This woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. And during the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I was your servant, while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. 
The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that he wasn't the son I had born. So you, I think you're familiar with this, and <laughs> and they they go to the king and they go back and forth, yeah, and they're arguing with a, each other. Now, I will be honest, I've never dealt with drama like this. <laughs> I don't think anybody. This is like this is above Tiger King. Okay, this is like <laughs> next level drama, right? And and one thing I was talking to Candace about earlier actually yeah. is this really happened. You know, we yeah. sometimes we think that they're just stories, but can you imagine no. this happening? And but but what's amazing about this is right after Solomon was granted wisdom from God, he he was kind of put to the test, right? Yeah. Um, and what does he do? He says, "Bring me a sword." So he's gonna <laughs> cut the baby in half. It's like. <laughs> but but by what? doing that, he, he gets a response, and and with with the knowledge that he has and the wisdom that he was given by God, he could tell who was lying and who wasn't. Oh yeah. Um, so I think when it comes to drama, um, I, I think we need to. Like you said, sometimes your your ego might get in the way, or sometimes we react and and we're not thinking properly. Yeah. Um, I think we need to use what God has given us um, in those situations. Right. And I think. Um, uh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no! I, I was just gonna say, go not all of us are blessed with wisdom. <laughs> um, just saying. Um, I, not you. Me. No. I'm, me. Um, I'm, I'm offended. So thanks. Jerk. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I love you, Luke. Love you. Um, but uh, but yeah. So God has given us gifts, and and sometimes it takes us a while to figure out what that is. Um, but those can definitely be used uh, in those situations. Whether it's um, like when I was in high school, just I think the reason that I would get so many people coming to me was because they knew I would listen. Mm. Um, I feel like just being a good listener can sometimes help people in situations. I may not have had the right answer. Sometimes listening can, answer. just listening can dissolve or resolve a problem completely. It, not always. Really sometimes it's, it's deeper than that, but sometimes, yeah. you know, I've, just, I've dealt with this in law enforcement. So sometimes, you know, you're dealing with people and they'll call you out and to like a, a the scene of a incident and all they want to do is talk and they'll scream and, and yell and they're mad. And if, you just listen, and eventually, they'll go. Okay, I, like I feel better now. Yeah, Not that everything's yeah. perfect, but I feel better about it now. Right, because somebody listened to me. Yeah. So, so I, I, I just think that that's important. So Solomon used his wisdom to resolve that issue. Um, we can use whatever gift that we have from God, oh, yeah. and, and you know, we all have different gifts. Um, but but whatever it is, um, you know, just just not react so much. Yeah. Um, but but stop and think, take a deep breath, um, and really, um, again, it, you know, the most important thing would be to take it to God. Oh yeah. I think the. <coughs> I think everything you said is spot on. Um, totally agree. Um, and one <coughs> one other thing that really helps me and any dramatic situation is just take a step back yeah. and just breathe a second. Just like, I think Solomon did that probably in that story. You know, you have this, these women who come up and they're frustrated and mad instead of jump to, you know, jump the gun and try to fix it instantly. He kind of steps back and like, how can I fix this? How can I figure this out? Right. Um, no, I totally agree. All right, Jason. Um, <coughs> uh, what's your favorite cross-eyed memory? Oh man! Um, I threw you a curveball with this one. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. Uh, you did. Uh, I'm not going to bring up the time we initiated you. I won't. Actually, go ahead. It's perfect. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> so I. So disclaimer. This was not my doing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we told everybody, or we told Luke, everybody that. Uh, you had to be initiated to be in, to be in cross-eyed. 
and Luke was the first person to be initiated <laughs> and last person to be initiated <laughs> into Cross End. I hate um, you, but I love so, you. It's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. So, so where did it start? I believe it started. We blindfolded you at Oklahoma. <laughs> you blindfolded me. I know exactly how this went down. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you. You guys blindfolded me, um, walked me down to the basement, wrapped me in saran wrap, then wrapped me in chains, which didn't do anything because they weren't locked. They were just hanging on me. <laughs> then you guys walked me to the car. I don't even know whose car it was. Walked me to the car. Um, Hannah Taylor kept hitting my pressure point behind my ear, and it hurt real bad, so it freaked me out. Uh, Aaron was feeding me gummy bears for some reason. You walked me out to a, the middle of a field and threw firecrackers at my feet. So, so it was actually the parking lot at High Lie. Wait, what? Yeah. No, it wasn't, dude. It was. Was it really? Yes. <laughs> so, I, I think we walked you through the little, like, the little bridge. Yeah. We went over to High Lie's parking lot, and yes, there were some firecracker things poppers uh, involved um, but then is, didn't we go straight to the Sawyer's house yeah so after the firecrackers y'all took me to the Sawyer's house yeah um, you know put me back in the car Hannah still hit my pressure point <laughs> and you know <coughs> they take me to this house they set me down on the floor and it's it's dead silent and I'm like what what is going on? Like, where am I? And I have no clue where I'm at. They take off my blindfold. I have no clue where I am. I'm surrounded by people in hoods, like black robes and black, <laughs> black hoods. Robes. And they're yes. all chanting a song and there are candles lit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Dude, I was freaked out. Y'all scared the crap out of me. And um, it was... Yeah, so then, was then about a week fantastic. later, we're all at church together hanging out and cross eyes all together. And Clint's like, hey, man, come over here. I want to tell you something. And I was like, all right, man. He was like, hey, you know how you uh, got initiated just like the rest of us? And I was like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we never did that. You were the first one. And then they all ran. And I was like, are you serious? Which, speaking of, um, speaking of uh, being scared, yeah. I don't know about Northside, but Oklahoma Church of Christ is the scariest place on the face of the earth at nighttime. I think it's in a church building. But, um, <coughs> Maybe I've watched Omen too much, but it is terrifying. Um, I, I was just told I'm being too loud. So. <laughs> Maybe I watched Omen too much, but it was terrifying. I, I, no, I, I've been at Oklahoma at night alone. Um, it, it, it's scary. It's sketchy. I'm pretty sure we we told the kids that there's a ghost that lives up in the nursery room. And some there of them is. believed us. There is. I, I know there is, but yeah. we told them that story. And, yeah. yeah, some of them believed it, and it was hilarious. Anyways, <coughs> Jason Jones, I don't want to keep you forever. I know you um, got a wife and baby there. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for um, having us. Um, you can reach Northside uh, again at Northside Church of Christ on Facebook or Northside Network is our youth group on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, Jason, I love you, bro. It's been good talking to you. Um, and mm -hmm. thanks for being our first guest, bro. I appreciate you. What? Yeah, and see, I, mean, I guess, yeah, being the first guest on the 007. 007. Uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. And you know what? You can have me anytime. All right, guys, that was, uh, wraps up our interview with Jason Jones. Um, go give their pages a follow, give them a like, or comment, whatever you want. Um, and going back and speaking about drama. I do work in law enforcement part-time. It's a reserve thing, volunteer thing. There are some times when you're in really dramatic situations, um, and that's that's a given. Um, and and the, the thing that I found through that is the best thing you can possibly do is try your best to keep a level head, whether that means um, praying to God. I've literally prayed while I'm talking to people in some really tough situations. I prayed over a kid while he was... He just got jumped and mugged in the street. He was just laying there. He was like 12 or 13 years old. Whether it's praying, whether it's taking a step back and just observing and seeing what's happening, whether it's um, getting involved and, and, and taking an upfront stance on certain things, whatever it is, um, there are certain things that we can be doing to combat petty drama. Um, I pray for you guys that you guys can uh, 
deal with drama better in the future, whatever that means and however that looks for you guys. Um, but I love you guys, praying for you guys. Don't forget, check out the song of the day. Uh, Social Club is not dead by Social Club Misfits. Check them out, the link's in the descriptions. Um, and go out and have an awesome week. Love you guys.